This is Coons Ford Turp Talk with Bruce Posner. 60 minutes of Maryland athletics and your phone calls at 410-481-1300. Now, here's Bruce Posner and Turp Talk. We got Lefty on? Well, it's my high privilege and distinct honor to have the most recent electee of the Naismith Hall of Fame in a tremendous class, and that is my good friend and tremendous Maryland coach, as well as a tremendous college coach, Lefty Drizel. Lefty, welcome in, and congratulations. Well, thank you, Bruce. How to come up with Hail to the Chief for you, Lefty. That's uh, what I remember. <laughs> Lefty. I don't know. That wasn't my idea. <laughs> well, you had a lot of great ideas. You know, above being an incredible coach, to me, you were an incredible showman. And that was definitely part of your game. But, you know, everybody, it's this means so much to your legion of followers, so, you know, across the uh, colleges that you coached. What does it mean to Lefty Drizel? to finally, and I think it's long overdue, but we'll forget about that, to finally get into the uh, Naismith Hall of Fame? Well, I'm, I'm happy, you know, that's like a lifetime goal for everybody that's ever coached. So, you know, it was, you know, wonderful for me. You know, my grandchildren can read about it, but really I'm more excited for my players. Because, I mean, I didn't get any rebounds. I, I just put teams together. But I didn't do it myself. They are the, the players and the coaches that, that worked under me and the managers and the trainers and athletic directors and all that. That's, it, it, it's a bigger honor for them than it is for me, truthfully. The, the selection process is so difficult to get into. And I think you had somebody really on your side with Charlie Scott. I, <laughs> I know, and that's a guy you really regret who didn't come to Davidson, I assume. Yeah, well, Charlie, I didn't even know he was getting in until I went up to get re- get fitted for my ring and my jacket, and I saw him up there. And, you know, we, we've become very, very good friends over the years. And, you know, I, I love Charlie, and it was great that we both went in together. Who called to tell you the great information? Uh, John DeLeva. And uh, was it, were you, were you, did you know it was coming that day? Was it something where you were sitting Yeah, up? yeah, they told you they were going to call you between uh, 12 and 3 on uh, March the 28th, I think it was, yeah, 28th. Lefty, who will be your advocate at the ceremony September 8th in uh, Springfield? Normally they assign an advocate to the coach, I mean to the player. Uh, do you have anybody in mind yet? No, I mean, you, you see, there used to be that, you pick somebody and he sort of told something about you, you know, your career. And But they don't do that anymore. See, there's going to be, I think they told me the other day, about 16 of us or 12 or whatever it is. So you got five minutes to speak. and and But they don't let anybody speak for you. They, you, you used to have somebody come out and tell about your career, and then you came up and spoke, but they've cut that out, if, if I'm reading it right. So, you know, I just, I wanted, uh, I haven't really told him who, that I'm going to tell him, George Ravelin, who was my assistant at Maryland. And a good and friend it, and also a member of the Hall of Fame. He's yeah, got- so you have, to, you have to pick somebody that's already in the Hall of Fame. So I think John Thompson and Ravelin, and they, can, they just walk up with you. They don't say anything. And then I, I like to get Mike Shishetsky because I played at Duke, but I don't know. He's going to go up for uh, <laughs> for what Hill? Um, you know what I'm talking about? Grand Hill. Grand Hill. Right, yeah, right, Grand right. Hill. Well, I tell you what. Uh, I even called the day to get tickets. You got to do it this far in advance. Uh, it's really something uh, beyond special. Lefty, you know, in all the accolades you received, I, I really studied your career last year. And a lot of the, you know, there's, you know, of course, here in Maryland, we say, well, lefty is Maryland. Well, it's not the case. You were at Davidson and Georgia State and James Madison for a long time each. And in each case, you turned the program around. What was it in your ability to really 
you know, even put a school like Maryland on the map. But you did it for all four of those schools. Well, it started in high school. You know, I I started being a manager for the football and basketball and baseball teams when I was in the second grade. I went through the same school, Granby High School, from the second grade through the 12th. So I, you know, I was in on early football, baseball, basketball, pregame talk, and postgame talk, halftime talk. So I kind of learned how to coach, you know, and how to motivate people from doing that. And then I, you know, I'm at Duke News High School. That was might be the, one of the best teams I've ever coached. We were twenty five and zero, and had a ended up getting a win streak to fifty seven straight. So then Eddie Cameron called me up and asked me if I wanted the Davidson job. He he knew the, Tom Scott, the athletic director, and I said, yeah, I want to get into college coaching because I tried to get the job at Hampton Sydney when I was at Granby, but I didn't get it. Because I always wanted to coach in college, you know, coach against the best players. Uh, question. So, you're 27-3 and three in your final year at Davidson. You, you're the regular season champion, the conference champion. You get to the NCAA tournament, and then you leave to go to Maryland. What was the procedure? How did that go about? And who contacted you from Maryland to get the ball rolling? Well, it started before the NCAA playoffs. Jack Heisey, uh, who was a big Maryland fan, came down to see me. He, he kept calling me and said, we want you to come to Maryland. And I said, look, I got a great job here. I'm 27-2 and two at the time. <laughs> and I said, I'm not interested in leaving, really. But I knew that... Maryland was a, you know, had a great arena. See, we I had to drive 22 miles to get to the Charlotte Coliseum where we played most of our games at Davidson, and um, so I knew it was a great place to play the, the biggest arena in America on a college campus at that time. And so, you know, I said, look, I can't talk to you till the season's over. And so when when we lost on the last second shot by Charlie Scott. You know, Coach Keo came up to say, come on over to my house, I want to talk to you. I said, Coach, I just got knocked out of the Final Four. I can't talk right now. I don't feel like it. He said, well, you got to come. you got to come. So, uh, you know, my wife and I went over there, and he started talking about, you know, um, look, you be right here in the nation's capital. we got Ted Williams uh, coaching the baseball team. we got Vince Lombardi coaching the football team, and we want you to – come here and coach the basketball team in D.C., the nation's capital. And, you know, he, you know, I knew a little bit about um, Maryland because I had seen Maryland play when Fred Hessel's brother, Will, was playing there. So, you know, I, he said, well, you go downstairs, we can take Watt Joyce, and you, you, you got to tell me in the morning. So we went down and talked, and I came up in the morning and said, okay. Well, you started off thirteen to thirteen, then fourteen to twelve, but from then on, twenty-seven and five, twenty-three and seven, uh, twenty-four and five, twenty-two and six. It was a it was a run that today is almost impossible to repeat. Did you think you were you were going to be able to do it that fast? And obviously, recruiting helped a tremendous amount. Well, yeah, I thought that. I did it at Davidson when I I went in Davidson. I had never coached in college. And I had them in it. In the, see, you got to remember this. In that day and time, and at Maryland too, freshmen couldn't play. Correct. So, you, so your first year, you're using somebody else's players. So in my third year at, at Davidson, we were in the top ten. My third year at uh, Maryland, we were in the top ten. So, so I, mean, I know I can coach. I can still coach. I, I would <laughs> tell. Let me tell you something. A lot of t- a lot of schools could use you. We'll leave it at that. All right. <laughs> Uh, no, not at my age. I can't do it. Somehow you could still coach. Like guys like you and Larry Brown, you always could coach, right? <laughs> Up until the last day you could coach. Uh, I don't know. I, I just I know the game and I know how I like to play. And I never worked. I was never an assistant coach to anybody. You that's know, amazing. So, so I just coached like I like to play, and you know, that's what I did. In 73, 74, you had the loss – to uh, NC State and what would many consider one of the greatest college games ever played, even though the Terps did lose, and which kind of changed basketball forever because the Terps Me. incredibly didn't make the tournament that year. Well, that is a game, really, that 
I think a guy's going to do a 30-30 program on it because, uh, you know, up until that year, only one team from a league went. And, and so the next year, it's ironic that Tom Scott, who was my athletic, athletic director at Davidson, is the one that was head of the selection committee, and he said, we got to have two from a team, from a league, if, they, if they're good enough. And so the next year they said two from the ACC or any league could come. So they were only letting 24 people in. Now they were letting, what, 32 or something. And then it went up like today they're letting uh, letting 68 or 69 in. Yeah. And, it, and the difference, there's an article in Basketball Weekly about it. At that time, the, the Final Four was making, I don't know, a couple million dollars now the Final Four is making billions of dollars, you know. So that that game sort of got uh, March Madness going. Without question. Speaking of madness, Midnight Madness, uh, your creation, your promotion, what brought it about? Where did that, you know, where did that come from in the great mind of Lefty Drizel? <laughs> well, you know, that was the first. That was that was going to be Tom McMillan's uh, sophomore year in Elmore's, and I knew we were going to have a good team. So I think George Ravin and I and Jim Maloney, we were sitting around the table and said, well, you know, we can start practicing on October the 15th. Let's just start it at midnight. Because I always made the team run a mile the first day of class to, to make sure they were in physical shape. But when, when we ran the mile, you know, in the afternoon, we didn't have a very good practice. So I said, let's run the mile at midnight, and uh, then we'll practice at 3 o'clock that afternoon. We'll get a jump on everybody. And um, so we did. We had about 500 people out there watching us on a track run. I think it was Maurice Howard or somebody said, let's, let's, next year let's have a scrimmage. They probably didn't want to run, but we ran anyway. But we did have a scrimmage, and so the, the coal fuel house was just about filled up, so it just took off from there. Yeah, it certainly did. Uh, effects of one and done. Now, it's, you know, the Moses Malone story, I think had Moses come to Maryland, I think we know there would have been one or two championships without question. Uh, you look back at that. All right. How do you look at the effects of one and done? Do you think it's hurt the game? Would you rather see kids be able to leave to go to college, I mean, to go to the pros right away if they wanted to? Or it really is a a tough situation. I know Coach Turgeon has had a hard time dealing with it. No, I, I'm I'm all for it. look. Look what happened to Moses. He did it pretty good. Yes. He was the first one that ever went from high school. People don't give him credit for that. He was the first one that ever went from... Spencer Haywood went to Detroit for one year and then went hardship. See, back then, you had to graduate. Your, your class had to graduate. You had to go to college four years or not play for four years before you could go to the NBA. But I think you can't... It's unconstitutional to tell a kid that he has to go to college for a year. I, I think he should go out of his junior year in high school. Look at the golfers and the masters. This week. Half of them were 20 years old. Oh, I, I don't think you can make a guy go to college. Now, if he wants to go, great. But if he wants to go play pro basketball and get paid, let him go. Take a look at coaching comparisons now, Lefty. You watch. You still watch a lot of basketball. In your eyes, who are the guys who stand out today and what do you see that they've done, or how would Lefty be a different coach today? No, oh, I wouldn't be any different. I mean, there's a lot of good coaches around. You know, just like who is the coach of Chicago? Um, Loyola you know, Chicago. Loyola Chicago. Who is the coach? It slipped my mind. I, I can see. Yeah, see, face. you know why? You know Sister So and So, don't you? Her Sister name. Jean. Sister yeah, you Jean. know Sister Keen. She got all the credit. <laughs> and John Thompson was talking about that at the Final Four. I spent a lot of time with him. He said it's a shame because that guy's a good coach. <laughs> and and but the Sister Jean got all the credit, and she, and she never picked up a basketball. <laughs> you know, so you know it, it's hard to tell you who's the best coaches and that, but uh, you know, certainly, certainly. See, uh, See, what I think 
is, and I don't read this much, and they don't even say it about my career, but I say the teams that were in the final top ten were the best teams in the country this year, not necessarily Chicago or Loyola or, or Michigan. And, you know, look at the t- teams in the final top ten were probably, um, I know Duke was in there, North Carolina was in there, and I can't tell you, but, you know, it's gotten to the point if you don't get to the final four, you've had a bad year. Well, that's not true. You look at the last two years, and a lot of teams that were in the final top ten were not were not in the final four. So you can have a great year without going to the final four, winning the national championship. Oh, I truly believe the co- the pressure on coaching is too much, and making the tournaments the first step. And today, getting to the Sweet 16 is a monumental achievement. Right. It, it's it's very, very tough. Uh, Lefty, you talk about who are, like, you know, we know, I know all the players are ecstatic, and you think you'll have a, a ton of them show up for the event in uh, in Springfield? Well, I made, they told me that I could invite anybody I want to, so I, I've called the sports information directors at, Davidson and Maryland and uh, JMU and um, Georgia, Georgia State. State. And they're getting a list together for all my players and managers and coaches. And I'm going to send them a personal invitation and they don't have to come. But I, I, I want to, them to know and they can get a cheaper rate <laughs> because yep. it's expensive to go to the thing. <laughs> so I'm going to write all of those players and I, I, I want them to know that I. I wouldn't be there if it wasn't for them, truthfully. I, I think they know that, and but I'll tell you the truth, you helped so much in all of their careers, and uh, you know, Twitter lit up when you got in, and certainly in, in the College Park area, and the Baltimore area, and Washington, but I'm sure down in James Madison, and Georgia State, and Davidson. Lefty, what was it in your, in your thoughts, and you had so many big wins, what's like one of the biggest wins you, that you think you ever had as a coach? Which one meant the most to you? See, that's hard to say, but, you know, a lot of them. I, see, I always think if you're a good team, you can win on the road. And, and when I was in Newport News High School, I, I only had one undefeated team. We were 25-0 and 0 in state champions, and so that was a great team. And in and, and colleges, you know, we uh, – I can't think – you know, I'm I'm 86 years old well, you now. Think, but, you still think pretty good. You, <laughs> you know, think. when when uh, when we the first defeat you know, on Dean Smith in the uh, in the Dean Smith Center, that was a big win. And uh, you know, uh, I don't know. We 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 put the we scored 100 points in Duke Duke Indoor Stadium, and we put the worst defeat on North Carolina. And, in uh, Carmichael and also in the ACC tournament. So, you know, and I'm, I'm sure I'm not thinking about the You've had so ones. many of them, it's hard to recollect. I'm sure you had a ton of them at Davidson. I mean. Yeah, David Davidson, we had my first college game. And I had never coached in college, and I would never recruited. Never, my first college game, and I've got the ball right here. We beat Wake Forest, who had Billy Packer, and they, they ended up winning the consolation game in the Final Four. We beat them my first game I ever coached in college. I told my wife when I got home, I said, I should quit right now. <laughs> well, but uh, anyway, that was a great win. I, I can't remember all of them. How about, the, were you shocked with the win of UMBC over uh, Virginia? That was, the, and it wasn't so much that they won, it's the way they won. It was incredible. I know it really was. I, I don't know what happened to Virginia. I, I, one year, one of my better teams at Davidson, right? We had beaten VMI the last game of the year by about 30 points, 28 or whatever it was. So we ended up fi- playing them in the finals of the tournament. They beat us. We lo- we missed the last second shot, and that, that's what reminded me of Virginia losing to that game. But it was but my game that we lost was really really close. But we had just beaten VMI by 25 or 30 points the last game of the season. They beat us in the finals of the tournament. So I think. Virginia just took them lightly or something. I, I don't know. Well, Lefty, I have to tell you, you know, I can't wait for that day on September 8th at Springfield. And I've been to Springfield's a great place to go to. I mean, just to visit the Hall of Fame. But 
to finally see you receive that honor means so much to everybody in Maryland. And I know how much it means to you and your wife. And uh, all I can say is uh, go Terps and Lefty. There's no one more deserving. And as far as I'm concerned, even with Grand Hill and and uh, Jason Kidd and some of the other ones, Mo Cheeks and Ray Allen, you headlined that class. Well, I don't know about that. Those well, I think great. so. I'll Those guys you. were great players, you know. They were super. And they're very nice people because I met them, you, you know, at the Final Four this year. They're wonderful, right, wonderful people. It, it, it's certainly an honor, and I can't wait to see you there. And, Lefty, thanks so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Okay, buddy? Well, you're certainly welcome anytime. All right. Thanks, Lefty. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye. Wow, what do you say after having the left-hander on? It's uh, beyond special, and I can't even follow that up. So right now, we'll go to that first break. And this is Bruce Posner. You are listening to Coons Ford Presents Terp Talk here on CBS Sports Radio 1300. Welcome back to Coons Ford Terp Talk. Call 410-481-1300 now. Once again, here's Bruce Posner. Wow. I tell you what, I go from the Hall of Famer himself to the Hall of Famer from Ford, and that is Dennis Kalatsis. Dennis, welcome in. Did you enjoy the lefty interview? It was great, uh, uh, Bruce. What a, what a wonderful interview with Coach. Absolutely yeah. fabulous. What an honor to have him on my show. And just, uh, he, you know, he just says he's 80. He's as sharp as a tack, let me tell you something. When you get on talking about basketball, it, it's, it'll be almost like talking to Bill Walsh as he got very yeah. old. I mean, he's a, a master of knowledge. And could there be anybody more deserving to get in the Hall of Fame than Lefty? Uh, you know, long overdue it and very much deserved. What a great honor to have on your show, Bruce. Yeah, it really was. And uh, thanks for you for giving me the opportunity by supporting me to, to have the privilege of interviewing a lefty Grizzell. It was great. Well, My Dennis, pleasure. every time I, I watch now, I look at all the mock drafts, and we're getting near, what are we, two weeks away? Yeah. So the draft is actually the 20, is this Thursday the 26th. Is that it? That's exactly right. All right are you going to come in on the 25th? Absolutely well. Be my right. honor. Yeah, I definitely want yeah. you in. And uh, let's talk about DJ Moore because first I saw he's definitely seems like the first wide receiver taken now. And he's jumped into the 24th position to join Torrey Smith at Carolina. Might it go higher or lower? Yeah, I think he'll go higher. I think he's the best receiver in the draft. He solidified his status at the combine. He gives you everything you want in a receiver. He, uh, he even measured six feet tall, which is, uh, look, it's, it's just a lot better than 5'11", aesthetically speaking. It speaks to the scouts and the teams that are evaluating these players. But he'll be the first receiver off the board. But anything can happen, Bruce. Uh, it, every team values uh, you know, players differently. So we'll see what happens. And the Ravens and Redskins are no exception. These two franchises, they have their board stacked a certain way. Will they go best player available? Or will I go with best player available at a position of need? That's the question. Dennis, let me ask you a question with DJ Moore. They said his combine was fantastic. Break it down for me because I know you follow it closely. It sounds like a crazy question to ask that's so specific. Break down what he did so well that was so impressive. Well, his three cone drill was, was, was impressive, which shows a change of direction. You know, his, uh, you know, when he leaves to touch the bar, that showed you explosion. His bench press showed you explosiveness. His 40 time was there. Uh, but not just the combine, Bruce, but his pro day, he never dropped a pass, okay? And you had all kinds of NFL scouts there. North Turner was there calling the, you know, the route tree for him to run. So it was just the, his body of work. And you factor in that he had eight different quarterbacks in his college career throwing the ball to him. He didn't have Dan Marino, you know, for three years throwing him the ball. It's really impressive. So with a top-notch quarterback, with no disrespect to the current Terps quarterbacks, the sky's the limit for this kid. If had he played for a team with a real good quarterback, look, he he might have been a top. He might be in the top five, type three consideration right now. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something. I know one thing, and this is again, this is no knock against the Terp quarterbacks, but if, what the heck, a, a third-string quarterback played most most of the season this year. Uh, the passes were never to him in stride. All right, they were behind him. They were over his head. They were like 
inside the sideline or out of bounds. And, right. And I got to tell you something, Dennis. We talked about this. I never saw him drop a ball. No, he never. That's the thing about Ravens fans. Uh, we've seen how many drops last year, the last several years, by receivers. And if you want a receiver with sticky hands, this, this is the guy. So you can do a lot worse than G.J. Moore at 16 if, in fact, that's the slot that he goes to. But he's going to be a, a rich young man. He's going to make a team better that drafts him. It should be a very fun draft day for him and also the, the, for the Turf faithful. So right now it seems like the Ravens, the, I mean, whenever the Ravens, say, whenever the rumors are the Ravens are going to take a tight end, the first thing I think to myself is they're not going to take a tight end. I mean, I, it just seems that way, but it seems like that's the need right now, correct? Well, that's the need, but it's not the need of number 16, Bruce. That's the problem. Uh, Dallas Godert, the, the kid from South Dakota State, he's a consensus number one tight end, but he's more of a late first round draft pick, maybe 26, 24, 28. And if that's what they're thinking, Bruce, then they can certainly hopefully find a trade partner at 16, trade back, get to tight end, and pick up an extra third round draft pick. That's the way to play it. The problem is there are no Rob Brankowski's in this draft. I mean, and they don't know how high his ceiling is. And Godert, he's, he's a receiving tight end. He just doesn't, he doesn't block well. So he's not a, you know, he's not a, a multi-purpose tight end either. They just have holes everywhere, so no matter who they pick, where they pick him up, Bruce, it's going to be a good pick for them. Mike Mayock, I've been following his uh, his uh, mock drafts closely, mm-hmm. and it seems like uh, he's predicting like nine trades in the first round. Yeah, it, Do you it see could that? happen. It could happen, Bruce, because what happens is every year there are about eighteen true first rounders. Okay. So after that, anything can happen. That's why you see a lot of movement towards the end of the, of, the, of the round. But with the quarterbacks, we could have as many as six quarterbacks go in the first round. And you have guys uh, like Kyle Loletta who might go in the second or third round, a kid out of Richmond. So what happens is a lot of good players are going to drop, and as these players drop, it, does, it will entice other teams to want to trade up with teams you know, like the Ravens and the Redskins that are picking 13th and 16th respectively. So... It should be a very busy first round. It should be a lot of fun, for sure. Yeah, Wayne Viner just texted me. His best catches were like seven yards out of pounds. They were thrown so poorly. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, he made acrobatic catches because he had to make acrobatic catches. But it'd be nice if he goes, he'll goes. he go to a team with a, with a good quarterback, and he'll make that quarterback better. He'll make Joe Flacco better. Uh, uh, he'll make whoever, who, you know, he's just a really, really good young man, and he's going to go high. Wade but says he, he catches like Willie Mays. <laughs> he does. I mean, he, to, to, to have a pro day where you, know, you don't drop a single solitary pass, Bruce, that's very impressive. It just it is. certainly is. And uh, how about the quarterback? Does, RG, does the addition of RG3 kind of eliminate the drafting of a quarterback this year, or do you think they might take one late? You know what? It, it depends on how the board falls and, and how they have these guys ranked. Look, if, if Kyle Laletta is there, and, or Will Allen is there, kid out of Wyoming. If, he, if those guys are there in the third round and the Ravens think, look, this is just not a backup. This guy can start for us in a couple of years. That may be the pick. I mean, it's, they're, they're going to need an eventual replacement for Joe Flacco. I like the addition of, of RG3. I think RG3 is coming in here to start. I don't think he fancies himself as a backup. He'll say all the right things about learning from Joe Flacco. He said that, but you know what? He's a competitor. He was the second overall draft pick a few years ago, and he does have talent, right? So I'm hoping he'll push Joe Flacco. I think by bringing him in, I think the Ravens are saying, hey, this, this, there's a, bit of a little bit of a difference. I mean, they've challenged Joe Flacco to work with the receivers in the offseason. I don't know that he's responded, but I think it's a little bit too late in his career to demand that of him. But they're stuck with Joe's contract for the next two years. Nothing would surprise me in terms of, look, if they take Lamar Jackson at number 16, Bruce, I'd be surprised, but I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah, I, L- Lamar Jackson's made it clear he wants a shot at quarterback. Is that true? He deserves a shot at quarterback. When you look at his statistics, I mean, look. No, I agree. Look at tape, yeah, he, he, he's not a receiver. He's a quarterback. He's an NFL quarterback. He has big hands. He's got the measurables. Look, he needs to sit maybe for a year or two learn a system and have a system created for him. But in a, in a right, with the right coaching staff, he can be a star. He can be Deshaun Watson 2.0. Very talented. So if you take him, at, I'd have no problem with the Ravens taking him at 16. 
Now, but that would also signal that they're, they're, they're looking to the future. They're not necessarily look, looking to, to win right now. Speaking of looking to the future, what's going on at Coons Ford? I know the inventory grows and grows and grows, and uh, what's hot right now? Well, keep your eye in your inbox, your mailbox, Bruce. Ford is sending out certificates to, to its customer base between $750 and up to $3,000. That's above and beyond what's on the hood of these cars right now, Bruce. So keep an eye in your mailbox, your inbox. Uh, there's a lot of marketing out there. They're spending $12 million right now in this campaign. They usually spend about $6 million. But uh, they're all over their customer base to try to get you, get everybody to come in and upgrade. They're given a thousand bucks trade assistance in most models. I mean, it is just it's it's a feeding frenzy. It's great. Well, I tell you what, you got me looking at the mail right now because I'm about ready to go back to a C-Max, and I know you still. Yeah, I mean, and I'll you know what I'll check when I get in tomorrow morning to see if there's any because I can check the database. But uh, all of our listeners, you know what, you know, call us and we'll we'll see what's in there for you, and you'll be between seven fifty and three thousand bucks, and. Look, if you're not in the market, that's a lot of money that, that can make you get in the market. Oh, there's no, there's absolutely no question about it. And I'll tell you what else is great, that it's not just with kind of like cash incentives to buy a car. They do it for service. They do it for tires. I got one in the mail the other day that if you buy three tires, you get the fourth for free. Yeah, that's, well, that's a deal. If you well, that's, tires, that's, that's insane. That's 33% off. That's a heck of a deal, Bruce. Yeah, that's but I mean, deal. it's not given to me. It's given to any Ford customer because they yeah. f- they fight like hell to keep them. And that's well, and the other the other part about these incentives, Bruce, plus our discounts, is we put our customers in a great equity position. Most customers have negative equity when they buy vehicles from other stores, but from us, between our discounts and and Ford's incentives and every penny we get you know, for our customers from the manufacturer, we put our customer base in a great position. They can upgrade every couple of years without losing anything. Yeah, I know I'm fully aware of that, and you've certainly always had me in a great position. But, uh, you know, I, I will tell you right now, that would be an incentive for me because, you know, I've been on the cusp a little bit. But, uh, well, that's, that's, what this, this, that's what this incentive is designed to do, Bruce, designed to bring people out who are on the cusp. You know, if you're not considering it, like an extra two or three grand on top of everything else, Plus another grant for trade assistance. And plus maybe ze- maybe 0% or 2%. It's That's like a, the other part of it. Yeah. it it's, it's almost it's, unbelievable. Well, yeah, it's, Dennis, it's a great deal. tomorrow you're on, of course, uh, down the channel with the Sunday yeah. Sports Voice. And, of course, I'll be your guest and we'll uh, continue on with some Ravens discussion and uh, some Maryland lacrosse discussion that I'll get to in my next segment. But, uh, wow, what kind of credit do we have to give John Tillman? Coming off a championship, losing his entire attack, and he's back to number one in the nation right now. Yeah, he's right there, and a big shout out to you, our, our UMBC Retrievers. What a what a great job they did knocking off Albany. Loved it. I absolutely loved it. And Ryan, they got a great, great coach, a great guy in Ryan Moran, and it's only a matter of time before he he moves them back yeah. to the level they were in, in the great years of Coach Zimmerman, and uh, that was a start. UMBC is. You know, when he gets some more offense in there, look out for Ryan Moran. He will do an incredible job there. A great guy, and seems like all good things are happening uh, in Catonsville at UMBC these days. Absolutely, and we're not. We're, we're got that match against Hopkins uh, circled on my calendar, Bruce. It's coming up fast. Yeah, April uh, April twenty eighth. It looks like April twenty eighth could, could be yeah. number one against number two or three. I mean, as it should yeah. be. Order has been restored, as they say. Yes, it has. It's a good thing. All right, Dennis, thanks a lot for coming on, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. My pleasure, Bruce. Go Ravens, go Terps. All right, this is Bruce Posner. Get out for our break in segment two here. Come back with our final segment. We're going to talk some Maryland lacrosse, Maryland spring football. Bruno Fernando. uh, Sorrell, the newest addition to the University of Maryland happened today. And is it Sorrell Smith? I just got, give me a second here. Sorrell Smith will tell you all about this guard. And it looks like uh, Coach Turgeon got himself a great addition today. And he bolsters that consensus top 15 recruiting class for next year. Back in a few minutes here on CBS Sports Radio 1300. This is Coons Ford Term Talk. Call 410-481-1300 now. Once again, here's Bruce Posner. Back here on segment three of Coons 4 Turp Talk. And, of course, segment one was with Lefty Drizel. We'll have that on replay on the website. Uh, one of our three websites now. And, uh, you know, talk about that and talk a lot a bit about Sorrell Smith, Maryland lacrosse, uh, football day. 
What else? I don't know, but my good buddy, Wayne Viner. Wayne, welcome in this, this evening. Hey, Bruce. Thanks for having me. That Lefty Grizzell segment was probably the best 20 minutes of radio that I have heard the entire team do in the six, seven years I've been with the show. Well, I that appreciate a- that, but it's easy with Lefty. Lefty is, even today at 86, he's a great guest. You know, he he, yeah. he has something about him that you, you can just tell you're mesmerized by him. He's really a special guy. Well, that was a fantastic segment. The other thing I need to bring up is, how's Atman's Deli doing at Oriole Park in Camden Yards? Atman's Deli is Take, I'm telling you, it's doing fantastic. I've been there a couple of times. Obviously, I'm on a personal appearance basis with Mark Atman, and I've been showing up there. Mark's a very, very good friend of mine. I'm helping to kick it off. And uh, even with the weak crowds the past two nights, Wayne, it's been busy. Opening day was insane. It was so busy. I mean, uh, just everybody's getting a hold of sandwiches. And it's a funny thing. His sandwiches, you're not getting a little bit of like corned beef like you might get at a stadium, a small sandwich. This is a monster sandwich, all right, that at $12, if you want to share it, you know, half of it might be enough. But uh, it's it's just, it's hit the crowd by storm, and he's got the cloak and dagger there with coleslaw and Russian dressing, and they're winners, Wayne, and I can't wait till the crowds get big to see. Uh, now, it would help if the Orioles win once in a while at home. They're now one, sure. they're yeah, one in five. A little bit. And the weather, I got to tell you, Monday night, Wayne, it was so cold there that it was beyond conception. It really was. It was just freezing there. And it was taking the high 30s. And it just, uh, and I was dressed warm or whatever. But, uh, you know, stop by and see me. I'll be there tonight. Uh, get a corned beef, a roast beef, pastrami. They even have cotties, Wayne. I know you love cotties. And uh, everything's reasonably priced. And uh, the, the uh, kiosk is hopping just like it does for the football game. But thanks right. for asking, okay? Hey, did they add in turkey for the They have stand? turkey, yes. Turkey sandwiches, turkey Rubens, cloak and dagger with turkey. They got, I mean, anything uh, delicatessen, they have great kosher hot dogs, admin kosher hot dogs, and uh, they have their mustard down there. And you're making me hungry now. I tell you what, the toughest part is hanging around there because of that pastrami smell. It's like, it's like inducing. You know, it's it's so enticing. You know, you can only eat so much. Uh, you're, you're tempted by the Royal Farms hot dogs. I can't imagine you living next to an Atman's Deli and not uh, partaking maybe a little too heavily. No, I'm, t- I'm watching myself. Okay, I got to. Or, you know, I'm big enough. Wayne, a big signing today with the big, big addition today in Sorrell Smith. Uh, are you familiar with him? Can you tell us about how he wound up at Maryland, a four-star guard at this time of the year? Well, I'm familiar with him because he decommitted for Mississippi State along with several others when they got in trouble with Adidas. They were one of the schools that the FBI had uh, under watch. So he was the best available of any guard out there. He's the 13th rated combo guard in America. He would be a big get if they just recruited him normally. Now, he was back on the market because of some trouble where he had decided to go. Talking about a 6-3 guard that Maryland's going to project more as a point than as a shooting guard. Um, he's a Class 8A player of the year in Florida. This is a big get. A kid who averaged almost 30 points a game. He was a finalist for Florida's Mr. Basketball. So from the, the disappointment of not getting Tariq Owens last week and out for get to that in a second, you go to the high of getting the best available guard on the market. So maybe there is an upside, and that just adds to Maryland's what's got to be a top 10, maybe a top five recruiting class now. Well, yeah, look, you look at Jalen Smith and guards Eric Aiello and Aaron Wiggins, and now you throw in Cyril Smith. You've got uh, Cowan and Herter and Morsel coming back. This could be a go team. This could really be a go team, and if if we can somehow get Bruno Fernando to stick around or whatever, uh, holy cow, it's starting to look like a real team, especially if Bruno comes back. But I think even if Bruno leaves, the the possibilities are endless with this squad. I really feel that way with these additions. Okay, so Tariq Owens, who is from Upper Marlboro, 
ends up at St. John's, leads them in blocks, plays a lot of minutes there, and decides as a fifth year as a grad transfer, he's leaving St. John's to go to a bigger school, a little more chance to NCAA tournament. He got down to Maryland Texas Tech. Everything I read had him lock, stock, and barrel to Maryland. And I thought when Bruno Fernando said that he was going to test the draft waters, that he, that Bruno was going to leave. But Bruno didn't get an agent, doesn't have an agent at the moment. All the kids from Duke who left, they all got agents. They're going pro. I think that Tariq Owens going to Texas Tech means that Bruno's coming back. That kid knows something, and he didn't want to come to Maryland as a fifth-year player and sit on the bench. So he goes to Texas Tech. Texas Tech lost five starters when they went to the NCAA tournament last year, so he's going to play there. I think that one move telegraphs the fact that Bruno's not going anywhere. For anybody who thinks I'm nuts, this is the same thing Justin Jackson did last year. He went to the draft tryouts, did not get an agent, he came back to Maryland. Now, unfortunately, he got hurt and didn't really work out. And he is going pro, Justin Jackson. But I, I think looked, Bruno's I, coming back. I looked at several mock drafts, and Bruno's not there. Now, we both know Bruno's potential is unlimited. And with what happened to Justin Jackson last year, coming back and then getting hurt, I would think that that might push him to, to, to not come back. But what, by not getting an agent, there is a message there. That, hey, look, if he goes to the combine and, and really stands out, he's gone. You know that as well as I do. But mm-hmm. is that going to happen? We really don't know. Well, everybody that, that you have heard of, and I know there are a bunch of one and dones, but just look at most of Duke. When they enter the draft, they're going to go number three, number four, number five. And if you're in the top 35 or 40, you just got pushed to not being drafted, probably. Because as these kids come in, somebody's going to take them with a high draft pick. So if Bruno was the only underclassman that went, which certainly is not the case, yeah, he probably would have gotten drafted. Wayne, we're running but, out of time, so give me an update on spring football this Saturday. What time? What's it? What's the format? And uh, is it the same lobster or uh, hot dogs again, or steak or hot dogs? I'm not sure what the winners get, but I'll tell you, 12:30. On campus at Maryland, it's spring football. Don Marcus is working on the story of the top seven players to watch for Maryland. So catch Don on the Baltimore Sun over the next couple of days. I will have a report from practice tomorrow afternoon. We're going to see DJ around 3.30. Hopefully we will get um, some of the players you haven't seen, like a McFarland. And maybe we'll get one of the injured quarterbacks who I saw throwing the ball, and they look great. So there's a lot to look forward to. But Piggy and Kasim Hill, neither one playing on Saturday. But go out and take a look. The turf should be much improved. Also, on Sunday at College Park, uh, Rutgers University comes in uh, gunning for the first win over Maryland since 1980. And a win they might need to get into the tournament. Uh, Maryland is now number one. They're back to their rightful place. And uh, sneaking up all of a sudden are our friends, Mr. Petromala, down from uh, Johns Hopkins University. They're up to four now. Uh, I think they're on a seven-game win streak, and they're playing uh, just fantastic. They're also 2-0 in the conference. And we're not going to look ahead for either team, but it's starting to smell like a showdown on April 28th. April 28th at Hopkins. You said watch out for the 11,000 people there, and there probably will be. On our other sister website, In the Crease Lax, that's In the Crease Lax, got a chance to get uh, Coach Petromala after the Ohio State game and a 6 5 attack from Loyola Blakefield. Cole Williams makes me look like a small guy, and he had four goals against Ohio State. He looks like he's going to be the real deal. He's the guy they needed in my eyes. He's the guy that lacking automatic score. I mean, uh, Marr is great. But it's kind of like he's got to be set up. This guy make, just makes it happen. He's fantastic. And uh, all of a sudden now with Shaq in his senior year and Joel Tinney, that team's really coming on. I think that 28th game's going to be great. Wayne, we're out of time. This is Bruce Posner. We'll see you Saturday on Coons Ford Presents the Sports Maven. 
Vision Source of Linthicum and Dr. Stephen Polikoff offer the latest in vision care technology. New wavefront guided technology creates high resolution eyeglass lenses. Vision Source of Linthicum announced it is now using wavefront technology to prescribe eyeglass lenses that enable the patient to see in high resolution without the surgery. Dr. Polikoff uses the Z View Aberometer, the latest in wavefront technology, to quickly and accurately map a patient's eyes for irregularities that can cause vision problems such as distortions, glare, and halo around lights. This exam produces an eye print. The eye print is like a fingerprint of the eye and each person's is unique. The eyes on lenses are then made based upon your personal eye print. Dr. Polikoff, located at 413 South Camp Mead Road in Linthicum, has been serving the community for over 30 years. The practice specializes in optimizing vision and has never seen a lens in all that time that has produced results like the eyes on lens. Call 410-859-3111 to schedule an appointment. The area's most popular restaurant for years has changed ownership and is announcing its spectacular brunch menu on Saturday from 11 to 3 and Sunday from 10 to 3. The guys from Sydney Cafe have brought its reputation of being a local citywide favorite serving Baltimore with delicious food in a relaxed modern setting to Tark's Grill. What a great menu. Check it out at Tark'sGrill.com. Remember, happy hour specials including six-hour appetizers at the hottest bar in town. That's Tark's Grill in Green Spring Station. Call 410 583 8275 for a reservation. If things in your life are looking blurry, there's only one place to go to see straight again, and that's Levin Eye Care. Dr. Howard Levin and Dr. Richard Levin, both University of Maryland alums, have 35 years of combined experience in serving the eye care needs of their patients. With two great offices in Perry Hall and Parkville, these doctors can address any concerns about your vision. Call 410-529-1950 to set up an appointment. Levin Eye Care accepts most medical insurance insurance, including Medicare. Glad Birdie Transmission celebrates its 55th year in serving the Baltimore, Maryland area with stellar transmission work. My good friend Mark Schwartzman provides factory transmissions remanufactured for sometimes hundreds less than the dealer. Call or email Glen Burney Transmissions for a free and accurate price quote at gbt-online.com. One year, same as cash financing available. Free area towing. Glen Burney Transmissions can also supply low mileage used transmissions with a warranty to fit your budget. Don't forget, we work on all imported autos as well. Call 410-766-8500 when you need transmission work. That's 410-766-8500. That's Glen Burnie Transmissions, 7166 Glen Burnie Highway. Kelly Exchange is your one-stop shop for individual and family health insurance coverage. On kellyexchange.com, you can learn about health care reform, find out if you qualify for a subsidy, get quotes, compare insurance plans, and purchase coverage. With over 36 years of experience in the insurance industry, kellyexchange.com is the only website you need to help you navigate the complexities and confusion of health care reform and purchase quality insurance for you and your family. Visit kellyexchange.com today. No one likes lawyers until they need one. But if you've dealt with an insurance company, you know that you're not in good hands, they're not good neighbors, and they're not on your side. I'm Mike Grossfeld. At Waldman Grossfeld Apple and Bear, we've been protecting the rights of people for over 40 years. If you've been seriously injured in an accident, hurt on the job, or have suffered at the hands of a negligent doctor, call me, Mike Grossfeld, at 888-8-LEGAL-6. That's 888-8-LEGAL-6. We'll fight for you. There's no better place in Baltimore to buy your new or used car than Coons Ford on Security Boulevard, across from Security Mall. Let's talk Coons pre-owned certified used cars. All of our listeners can buy with confidence. Coons Ford of Baltimore has an exclusive seven-day exchange policy. If for any reason whatsoever customers want to exchange a vehicle within seven days, no problem. Coons Ford simply likes to make a little bit of money many times. That is why they take a lot of time to make sure we have the lowest priced pre-owned vehicles on the web. When our listeners go to our website, CoonsBaltimoreFord.com, they will see all of the outstanding values we have to offer. 
That's Coons Ford of Baltimore, 6970 Security Boulevard, across from Security Square Mall. Remember, when you're talking cars, you're talking Coons. Call 410-298-3800. The preceding was a paid program, and the views expressed on this show do not represent the views of WJZ AM, Intercom Communications, its sponsors, or affiliates. CBS Sports Radio 1300 is WJZ AM Baltimore, WJZ FM HD3, Cajunsville, Baltimore. Your home for Maryland Terrapin Sports and live sports talk around the clock.